Hello, I'm William Welsh. I'm from the San Diego State University, and I'm a Kepler participating scientist and um, have the real privilege of uh, sharing with you our latest results from the Kepler mission that are being published uh, right now today in Nature. And so <clears throat> with that, uh, it is my privilege to uh, announce the discovery of two new uh, planets, Kepler-34 and Kepler-35. Uh, but much more importantly than just finding two new planets, this really establishes a whole new class of planetary system. And furthermore, we can estimate that the number of these systems in our galaxy is going to be up into the millions. So there are millions of planets in our galaxy that have two suns in their sky. Uh, as the name suggests, circumbinary uh, implies we have a planet that's orbiting around a binary star. A binary star is a pair of stars, and they orbit each other, and around that pair of stars is the planet. Kepler-34 orbits its planets every 289 days, and Kepler-35 orbits its planets every 131 days. Uh, both of them are Saturn mass planets, uh, bigger than Saturn, so they're fluffy, fluffy light Saturn planets, Saturn-like planets. Um, they are just inside the habitable zone, meaning too close to their star. So they're just a little bit too hot to be in the habitable zone, but that in, they're intriguingly close, and we can talk about that later perhaps. Okay, <clears throat> um, what I'd like to uh, share with you is some of the data that led to this discovery. So what we're showing here is a plot of the brightness of uh, the star, in this case Kepler-34, plotted against time. And we have about a year of data here. The entire analysis covered about two years. And we see most of the time the brightness of the star is at this level one, but then it dips down. And that's what these downward um, lines are. These are caused by eclipses of the stars. As the stars go around each other, they eclipse and they block each other's light. And we lose something like 45% of the light. That occurs in the case of Kepler-34 roughly every four weeks. If you look very closely up at the top there, there are three dots uh, colored red and, and green. And if you zoom in on those, you will see very small little dips. These are transits, which are mini eclipses. And this is when the planet passes in front of the star. We have two stars, so there are two different types of transit. There's a transit in front of star A, which is the brighter one, and a transit in front of star B, which is the dimmer one. Now one thing to notice, if you look <clears throat> in the bottom panels here at the three transits, uh, first of all, they're a fraction of a percent, so they're much smaller than the 45 percent eclipses that we get from the stars. So they're much more difficult to find <laughs> than just a single, um, uh, a planet around a single star. But also notice the widths are different. This is also very different from a single star in that um, in a single star, the widths of the eclipses or the widths of the transits are always the same. And what's happening here is because the stars are moving, their orbital motion uh, causes the widths of these mini eclipses to change. So you can imagine the two stars going around each other. And as one star is, <coughs> let's say, uh, moving to the left and the planet is going in front of it. Sometimes they may be going in the same direction and you get a long eclipse. But sometimes they can be going in the opposite direction and you get a short eclipse, sort of the first and second panels there. So uh, this is, again, unique to the binary type planetary systems uh, and, uh, in my opinion, very interesting. Uh, for Kepler-35, we have the same scenario here. The stars go around each other approximately every three weeks. And uh, in this case, we have four transits there. The transits are extremely important for um, absolutely confirming that these are planets. OK, <clears throat> what I'd like to show now is a brief animation, uh, give you an idea of the orbital motion of the stars, because we've got three objects, and it can be a little bit complex. So we have two stars going around each other here. This is for Kepler-34. And in a second, the planet will zoom by. There it goes. OK, <clears throat> so you'll notice the stars don't move at the same rate. Sometimes they're faster, sometimes they're slower. Now we're panning to a bird's eye view. Um, when the planets are, sorry, when the stars are close to each other, they move faster. And when they're further apart, they move slower in accordance with Kepler's famous laws of motion. And around the pair, the planet orbits. So now we're going to zoom back down to the plane of the orbit. And we see the planet go behind the stars in the background there.
we'll now <coughs> zoom up again for another bird's eye view to see what the system looks like. And again, notice the stars are not on circular orbits. This is quite different than um, a previous circumbinary planet, Kepler-16. These are very elliptical orbits. The final clip shows a sideways view and the planet passing in front of the star. So this is a transit, and we see the silhouette of the planet in front of the star. Okay, <clears throat> back in September, the Kepler team announced the first transiting um, circumbinary planet, um, and that was called Kepler-16, and it generated a lot of interest. It was a very exciting discovery. <clears throat> and uh, analogies with um, Star Wars fictional planet Tatooine, of course, were made and very common, and we had a lot of fun with that. <clears throat> but with one system, Kepler-16, we really had many, many questions which were unanswered. And probably the most important one of those was, is Kepler-16 just a fluke? Is a very rare accident, a freak of nature, that we found this system? Well, we didn't have any way of answering that until these two discoveries here. And with Kepler-34 and Kepler-35, we know that Kepler-16 is just one of a whole new class of planetary systems. And furthermore, we can estimate that this class contains millions of these types of objects in our galaxy. So I will then conclude here um, with uh, one thought, and uh, just a fun thought. Kepler-16 has two stars, of course, and Kepler-34 has two stars. But the, in Kepler-16, one of the stars is extremely small and extremely faint. It's one of the smallest stars ever measured. So up in the sky, you'd see one star and next to it a very, very dim, fainter star. That's different from Kepler-34, where both stars are pretty much like the sun, and they would have the, roughly the same brightness and the same size. So if you were looking at a sunset, hypothetically, from a planet, and you wanted something that looked like Tatooine, you should go to Kepler-34. If sunsets aren't your cup of tea, then stick around, and in about two weeks, you'll get a really, really dramatic eclipse, and those will occur roughly every two weeks in that system. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>